everybody, and welcome to Mary Elizabeth Jones' Variety Half Hour. Um, I'm going to have a special guest star with me today, so hope you all enjoy. So, actually, here he comes right now. All right. <laughs> All right. Trying to make it interesting. Welcome, Hi. Welcome to Mary Elizabeth Jones' Friday Half Hour Show. Mm -hmm. More like Mary Elizabeth's Half a Variety Show. Yeah. Half a Variety Hour. How you doing? Good. And uh, it's so good to be here. Yeah. You see me go down this. Uh, yeah, that was the sliding hilarious. Board there? That was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> still can do it. Still love doing. Still love. Still love playing in the playground. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, let's see. Now, uh, we just went to the movies. Yes. Tell us about the movie. So. Yes, we. W I always wanted to see the Elvis movie. So, yeah. um, him <laughs> and I both went to see it. Yeah, let me tell you something. They're not making any new Elvis movies. So, <laughs> this is the closest thing we can do is see. This film. Right. I understand Tom Hanks plays Colonel Parker. Yes. And uh, he said that he was the number one Elvis movie fan. He said that when he's changing the channels on at home and an Elvis movie is on, and he's, you know, like most people, we've seen them all. Right. Like there's about 35 of them. Right. If it's like in the middle of it or near the end or it's just beginning, he, he says he'll watch it all the way through. So I guess it was a... It was a, uh, a long time uh, uh, pursuit that he would appear in an Elvis movie, yeah. uh, and he plays Colonel Parker. You don't even recognize. And I didn't uh, recognize uh, him first either. He's a, you know, he's, you, you see a little bit of his face, but for the most part, fake nose, fake chin, everything, fake hair, everything on him, and he and he has a voice, a different voice. And it's, uh, I, I I really like the movie. Baz Luhrmann made it, who made Moulin Rouge. Yeah. And made the uh, recent uh, Great Gatsby. Yeah. And yeah, I really like the uh, uh, this movie. It was the only film this summer that I really wanted to see. Wow. I mean, I mean. Yeah, me too. That's about the only one that I wanted to see. I, I don't think there are, think there are any good movies out there. Well, they're all right, but they're not something I haven't seen before, like yeah, the, no. the new dinosaur movie, yeah, new like superhero Jurassic movie, Park. the new superhero. I mean, they're all good. Yeah. New Top Gun after uh, thirty-five yeah, years. Yeah. Or something. See, I, sometimes I don't even want to watch. No. I, because they're the same thing anyway. I have friends, and they'll only see so, a movie. They'll only go to see a movie if it has a Roman numeral after it or a John Williams score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you could, if you could buy the action figure to it, they'll see. They're there first in the line to right, see the movie. Right. And uh, so I, I, you know, I know a lot about the Elvis story, so I was rather uh, surprised a lot of things I didn't know. But I'm not sure a lot of that stuff I didn't know. Like uh, near the end of the movies, I don't think it's a big surprise. Yeah. He lashes out at uh, Colonel Parker. I don't think in real life he ever did that. Right. I think he was pretty much did everything Colonel Parker right. told him to do. Right. And um, so, uh, so yeah. And then uh, it's important to note, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff I actually experienced. Like um, I, I was just telling you uh, on the way over here that uh, uh, when I was growing up, Beatles, the Beatles were the big deal, and Elvis yeah. was kind of going by the wayside. His movies were still popular. And, yeah. And people knew who he was. Then he was popular, that wonderful yeah. 1968 comeback special on NBC, which which uh, they kind of show this in, in the movie, and you could actually get the outtakes to it. It was actually not really filmed as a live special like a lot of people thought. It was, you know, if he blew a line or if he blew a song, yeah. they did it over again. Yeah, right. And all those people in the audience were extras, yeah. paid extras, I, I, I assume they are, so that you wouldn't have to pay most of those people yeah. to see that. And then, um, and and uh, a lot, a lot has. And then he becomes this big hit in Las Vegas. He never goes overseas. He never made a European tour or a Japanese tour or something. He was popular there, but you know, never, never visited there. And and, and that's dealt with in the movie. Why? Yeah. Uh, but near the end, he lashes out at Colonel Parker, who took half of all his money. Yeah. And um, and they and I think he did. Maybe he did try to quit, but he he. I don't think he ever really got around. And I think at the end. 
uh, over the credits, they say that um, that Colonel Parker uh, um, negotiated for his uh, exit. But actually, I think I think it was more of Elvis's family did that. I think while Elvis was still alive, they pretty much let yeah, Colonel Parker do whatever yeah, he wanted. Yeah. But uh, you know, I love going to the movies. Yeah, me too. I go to the movies all the time. And yeah. uh, uh, oh, by the way, you were in New York and you bought me this nice pin. Yeah, it's last week. I yeah. uh, went to New York for Fourth of July weekend. Yeah. It's so, a beetle. Yeah, and I decided <laughs> to, brought, to bring him something back. Yeah. You know, from one of my yeah. adventures. So. It's a scarab. It's, <laughs> it's a, beetle, a beetle. As in beetle. Juice. Beetle juice. You saw the musical. Yeah, beetle it was juice. a great musical. Yeah, it'd be great. If you guys want to go to New York, that will be the musical for you all to go see. Yeah. So. I love, I just love going to musicals. Yeah, I me too. Love, I love going to Broadway. I like it when a star is in it. When I saw yeah. Beetlejuice, I don't, uh, I didn't know any stars in there. And and this new uh, Elvis movie, the only star in it, I think the guy who plays Elvis, a lot of people know Austin Butler, but Tom Hanks is the only mm -hmm. one I, I recognize. The whole movie is made in Australia on sound stages yeah. and with green screen, and everything. but yeah. it, but it looks good, it looks good. And uh, so you know, we spent last weekend making a movie, which is what we're going to talk about today. That is why it's like I, I joke that this is the Mary Elizabeth half half a variety hour because we probably won't get more than a half hour. In yeah. this. But we wanted to put this out there before right. the yeah. uh, before the show uh, uh, happens this weekend. Uh, if you're living in Richmond, if you're anywhere near Richmond, you could uh, come see the 48, 48 hour filming uh, project. Filming project. Yes. Uh, it's already been done last weekend. We do it every year, so. Yes, mm -hmm. and then they then they show them at the Bird Theater right. in the after uh, on a Saturday afternoon, and our movie is going to be there at one o'clock. Yeah. I mean one o'clock. There's like about twelve other movies, and they're right. all about six minutes long. So I'm sure they're all entertaining. They all had forty eight hours to make them. That's why it's not a four. You're not there for forty eight hours, as I like to mention. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, and this, uh, we're not going to tell you a whole lot about this movie because it's still kind of under wraps. But yeah. uh, but uh, you, we're both in it. Yep. And we both have pretty good parts in it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a mockumentary. So yes. we look forward to yeah. it. And I can tell you the name of it. It's called Ellie. Yeah. Yes. And um, and I, I, do you play Ellie? No. <laughs> I don't play Ellie either. But I'm I'm in the, I'm in a lot of it. I'm in almost every scene. Those yeah. six minutes is not. Yeah, you me know. too. I'm about in every scene too. You're in every scene too. I think okay. I'm about like two or three scenes. So. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's a few. So, and and uh, the um, and the script uh, was written by our friend uh, Stacy Frame, and uh, also it was a uh, Audi. <laughs> and um, so it's uh, our, our the script was written by our friend Stacy Frame, wow. and she um, and uh, it's a mockumentary, and uh, there's a lot of uh, fantasy elements in it, and there's. Uh, um, and uh, you know, I think they they have their their basis in the yeah. uh, children's theater. So a lot of you know magical fairies and <laughs> and witches and everything and and uh, that uh, that you know. So it's very hard to get away from that once you get into that. Like George Lucas, I don't think I've ever seen George Lucas make anything that wasn't like from outer space or anything. <laughs> right, right. So. Um, so uh, tell tell me about the the, the filming uh, the that you, um, uh, you made new friends and everything on there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We um, there was a lady and her daughter, mother yeah. and daughter duo, yeah. that you know came felt to film with us for the first time. Yeah. So, and she's originally from like other films. Oh okay. You know I think she's from like other filming companies or whatever. Oh wow. Yeah, from what she told me. So. Okay. You know, I've been in about 40 movies. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too, me too. I mean, 40 Hollywood movies. Not I don't know how many student films and, and independent films and, <laughs> and, yeah. and college films I've been in. In fact, a lot of them I've never even seen. Hmm. I filmed them, and I want to see them. Not that the, the only I'm too good for them. I'm not like, oh, who's the guy who never saw a film? George Rapp. Yeah. I, I would see the movies if they were, a lot of them wonder if they were ever finished. Yeah. I'm in a pilot made for television. Do two pilots that I've never seen. Mm. One actually had uh, a lot of big actors in it, like Peter Fonda oh, and yeah. Mal Gone. And, uh, and I think uh, Tom Berenger was in my scene. Yeah. Uh, I don't even remember the title, but I remember Rod Lurie directed The Contender, uh, uh, directed the film, the pilot. And then I was in something, I forget what, it was something like The Wild West or something. And 
uh, an act, and that was a pilot for a like a where everyone was wearing top hats. They all dressed like yeah. uh, from the wild wild west. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, they all wore those, you know, those fancy like uh, 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 tweed yeah. suits. Why do people dress like that in hot weather? I know. Like what I how I'm dressed. I can stand. <laughs> Oh, by yeah. the way, I'm wearing my Elvis outfit today. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, that's all right, Mama. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, so um, and uh, we uh, what I really like about making I just I just love being on a movie set. Me too. Me because too. the food is so good. <laughs> it's always free. <laughs> yeah. Plus, plus, you know, I want to show myself. You know. What do you mean? I want to show myself in a like, like you know. Show the people how I could do on the film. Oh yeah. 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 So. Versatile actor. Yeah, exactly. I always get typecast though. They me too. Well, what parts do they always give you? Like when I'm on stage, they give me like I, I play the goblin twice. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I play. I mean, I play. They, when they look at you, they say goblin. <laughs> we have a no. Go ahead. Well, and, see, uh, see, it just kind of happened. You know? mm -hmm. You know, I was a, a little shorty show, which I was about in that one. Yeah. And then there was another one I did recently, about like a month ago. Yeah. Dragon Slayer, the musical. Yeah. You know, I was a goblin in that. I heard you sing it. Yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah. You were. I. Uh, let's see. We were once in a in a musical where we played um, uh, beavers. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver. Mr. and Mrs. Beaver from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That was fun. Yeah, by... Uh, mm. by uh, uh, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, that's right. I was trying to, I couldn't... I'm glad you thought of him because I couldn't think of him. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, let's see, and then I played a rat in Charlotte's Web, played Templeton the Rat. Yeah. And it's strange what, what gets you applauded. Yeah. Like... For example, I played uh, Templeton the Rat in a memorable version of Charlotte's Web, and I also played the coach in a in in one of the many versions of um, High School Musical, and those yeah. are the two parts I'm most famous for for the longest time. Yeah. Until I played Atticus Finch and you know and the Crucible and, and more serious. Who were parts. you in the High School Musical? I played the coach. Oh, okay. Get your head in the game. Yeah, I got I got like best supporting actor award for oh, that, wow. you know. And 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 be honest yeah, with you, yeah. I didn't remember too much about it. <laughs> See, I didn't I didn't know you guys back then. Yeah. So, yeah. Have you ever won an award? I have. I've won a few for um, for a theater. I mean, what what awards did you win? I you got remember? Entertainer of the Year. Oh wow, that's a big. I've never gotten that. Yeah, and um, <laughs> what else? Uh, for the best. Accent voice. Best accent voice. Like I could do a good British accent. You do a good British accent. Yes. Okay. You know, let's, I, see, I, let's hear it. I I could I can read you a little All right. thingy. All right. For example, on screen keyboard, <laughs> got thirteen minutes and twenty two seconds. Yeah. Yes. No, it is four fifteen p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't imitate English accents, but I could imitate people with English accents. Like Michael Caine, I can sound like Michael Caine all the time. I and then and then there's and then there's James Mason. He used to talk like this. He was in a Star Wars born. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, name another person with a, a British accent. Oh, there's um, um. I can do quite a few of them. Julie Andrews. Yeah, I could do Julie Andrews. If I could do Julie Andrews, I wouldn't be here. I'd be singing. <laughs> I'd be singing at an opera. House. There's uh, Sean Connery. <laughs> okay, Sean Connery. I could do Sean Connery. Uh, uh, because my name is. Oh, what's my name again? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Money Penny. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. No, actually, he's a Scottish accent. Which is weird about Sean Connery when he was in The Untouchables. He did a, he played an Irishman with a Scottish accent, and then oh. Peter O'Toole played a Scots. Men with a Irish accent. <laughs> they, know, <laughs> so they should have switched parts. Yeah. And Peter O'Toole would have gotten the Oscar he deserved. <laughs> but I, but I don't really. I, I use a joke. I don't really imitate famous celebrities. I imitate a rich little imitating famous celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to be really good with imitations. In fact, on the Gorgeous George show, I, I came to for. Oh, I'll tell you something about doing imitations. Uh, was that um, 
Um, I, I try not to do them to the people, though. Um, the only time I've ever done it to a celebrity was I. Uh, somebody said to James Earl Jones, I was making a movie with him, goes, hey, this guy can do a really good imitation of you. And he goes, well, I'd like to see him do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I was kind of in front of everybody. I yeah. said, and I was very simple. I was kind of nervous because I never, I didn't know if he would take it right well or something. I said, "This is CNN," <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he laughed. And I, I guess he's used to that. Um, I uh, I once uh, met a woman who um, she worked in the film industry in New York, and she and and I said uh, I said, "Well, what do you, uh, what did you do in the film industry?" And she said. Well, I used to I used to work for um, Christopher Walken. I was his assistant. So I said, I should be so bold. <laughs> I think it's the police after us. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> anyway, I don't know if the people can hear it, but I, we certainly can hear it. It's going to uh, upset my invitation. So what happened was, I said to this woman, I said, I says, what's it like being Christopher Walken's assistant. And she says, I'll tell you what it's like being his assistant, always having to hear people do imitations of him once I tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to like doing voices, like uh, English accents or, or uh, American accents yeah. or something, you, you could fool, you could fool the, your own country, but you can't fool the country you're imitating. Like, for example, very few, like, uh, up until recent years, a lot of really good people could do American accents now, but a lot of British actors could not do American accents without giving it away. Um, uh, Peter Sellers and Peter Usinoff did brilliant uh, American accents, and so did um, uh, uh, Tra Tracy Ullman. Does a lot of uh, different, but you know when they do a, a like, but people like Benny Hill or, or like that, they they say, "Hello, partner, I am an American." <laughs> <laughs> and, and, it, and it doesn't, and, it's, and you could hear their British accent right through. I was in a, I, my, one of my jobs when I was living in Ireland, not my jobs, it was just something I liked to do. I knew a lot of actors, and a lot of them would be in, uh, um, would make, uh, uh, be actors in American plays like Tennessee Williams plays or even a David Mamet play right. or um, Eugene O'Neill plays or something. And they would say, um, what does a, they, they would actually tell me in their Irish accent, they would say, tell me, what, what does a man from, uh, uh, from Brooklyn sound like? And then I, and then they said, well, give me your lines. And then he says, I want you to go, I want you to go and, uh, and, uh, go to the uh, candy store and pick up the numbers and bring it home. He goes, yeah. he goes, hey, this is what I want you to do. Go to the office, get the, get the, uh, get the numbers at the candy store and bring it here. <laughs> and then, and they say, and then they would try it. And, and then they would say. And I said, no, nah, no, nah, I can still hear the Irish accent. Right. <laughs> they go on, and then we do it, and then finally they say, perfect, you got it, you got it. Right, right. And they would also get me, too. Uh, I, I tried not to do accents in front of people uh, because it's, I, think, I think it's kind of making fun of them yeah. when you make fun of people with accents. People yeah. would try to do American accents to me when I was living in Europe, and, and uh, it didn't sound right. I said, is that what you think Americans sound? You think we all sound like? I think they, what they knew was at the time was uh, J.R. Ewing. So they thought all Americans sounded like a Texan, like JR, yes. like yes. Larry Hagman. And I said, he goes, hi, I'm Larry Hagman. Yeah. <laughs> when actually Larry Hagman sounded more like this. He had a very short yeah. <laughs> clip voice. <laughs> but they just heard it as a typical Amer of what they would hear in their mind. You hear things differently, like, like on the phone. I've heard myself on the phone, and I, I mean, uh, with the dial tone and everything on the other end, and it didn't sound like me. And then, and then I heard a recording of my voice that didn't sound like me. And then I found out once the recording of my voice was a yeah. lot, not a whole lot different from the phone voice yeah. I had. Yeah. Then I realized that this is probably how I sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made a joke once um, when people were imitating me. A lot of people imitate me. Uh, and when uh, when they would imitate me, they would make me sound. They sounded like um, like uh, Edward G. Robinson, and even Gorgeous George and and people on the show do that. He goes, "Hey pal, how you doing today? Hey hey, listen here, see, I'm the watchman here. Yeah yeah yeah. I mean, they thought that was my voice. So I said, I don't sound at all like that. And I did that voice for them. So yeah, that that's that sounds exactly like you. <laughs> You you are you do a very no one does a better Kevin than you do, <laughs> a better Kayla Zara than you do. 
So, uh, so what other voices have you tried to do on uh, on stage? The, the British accent. I did. I did British accent. I tried to do the hillbilly accent. Southern, southern accent, accent, yeah, accent. southern accent. And then yeah. um, I tried to talk a a Yankee accent. Yankee. Like New York accent. Oh, like a, like New like New York Yankee, like Babe Ruth. <laughs> yeah, there was a yeah. um, there was a show a couple of years ago that we did in front of Pan Yeah. It was called the Cody Island Christmas. Oh yeah. And I was trying to do. I was trying to do a northern accent. Yeah. Like a New York. New York, New York accent. New York accent. I can do a New York accent. Because, because, hey, 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 I got your bagels right here. Bagels right here. <laughs> sounds ex sounds exactly like they talk in New York. And also, another one they say is, uh, uh, what's the other thing? Are you gonna go to the store or what? <laughs> Are you going to the store or what? <laughs> What? <laughs> so, uh, you gotta, like, you know, gotta now my, the to it. Now my, my dad is, is, still has his New York accent. <laughs> uh, I've noticed. My dad is, is in his 90s and he still talks. Well, my mother, you know, was in her 80s and she still had an Irish accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, people, a lot of Americans never lose their, their regional accents. And, yeah. um, and, uh, I, I couldn't understand where my voice came from. It's a distinctive voice. Um, a lot of people see, seem to do me well because I've gotten parts and stuff right. because of my voice. But uh, because I was raised in the South uh, with an Irish and a New York uh, parent, my voice is kind of filtered through that. So, so a lot of people said, like, you know, I figured it out that my voice sounds like an, a, a, people, a person from New York trying to do a Southern accent. Or a person from the South trying to do a New York accent, <laughs> but I'm not make I'm not putting on any sort of voice. This is my voice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, I can tell you a whole bunch about. Uh, so so yeah, and 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 uh, so uh, my dad, yeah, my dad's you know sometimes I'll see like someone in a movie like Woody Allen or something. God, he's just like my dad now. <laughs> <laughs> the old, you know, I knew a guy. He looked like the old Cary Grant, wow. you know. Hello, hello, beautiful. <laughs> but he looked like the old Cary Grant. And I once said to him, I said, you know, you when I first met you, you know, because Cary Grant lived to be in his 80s. I said, you you remind me of the older Cary Grant, like in his 50s. And someone said, that's insulting to say. You should look like the 20-year-old Cary Grant. And yeah. I said, the 20-year-old Cary Grant was all right looking, but he looked like Pierce Brosnan. The older Cary Grant was distinguished and everything. And let me tell you something. If anyone says you look like Cary Grant, or sound like Cary Grant, take it as a compliment, because <laughs> yeah. Cary Grant is like uh, is like the best. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, um, is there anyone in show business you like their voices? Who no. does a good voice? There's Barbara Streisand does a good northern accent. But, but I mean, do you like her? Do you, would you like to sing like Barbara Streisand? Is she yeah. like one of your favorite singers? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you don't want to talk like her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you like to sing like yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. She's like she's like a lot of those singers like Jim Neighbors or you know, she has that uh that regional voice. Yeah. And uh but but then when she sings, she sings perf it's crystal clear. And um and uh the you know, I was in Liverpool mm -hmm. and uh the people have uh, a distinctive accent and they're very kind, very nice people, and they would actually ask me I was like waiting for a bus, and I thought they were they're starting to bother me. And then I and then when they I ex, uh, excuse myself, and someone else started talking to me, and they talked to say, I said, oh, this is the way the people talk in, in Liverpool. They're not like in London or any of these yeah. places. And uh, and that is why you know the Beatles were the, probably the most famous people from Liverpool uh, up to that point. And they and now I know why the Beatles were so charming and people like the Beatles so much because they're at, they never lost their accents. They don't sound like typical Englishmen. Yeah. They sound like uh, they. I actually spoke to um, uh, on a set of a movie, Harry Connick, yeah. and Harry Connick has is from New Orleans, so he has mm -hmm. this kind of weird, like this weird kind of New York accent, yeah. sort of. But he's not from New York, and he said that. And so I had to tell him the reason why you you sound so different was Liverpool and Dublin have a similar type of accent. A lot of those people moved to uh, uh, New York. 
a lot of them moved to um, uh, Acadia in, um, in, in Louisiana, where he's from, I guess, or near where he's from. He's from, I guess, New Orleans. But they all have that same similarity in their, in their voice uh, by way of Canada. Because I think they eventually first came, uh, and then because the French Indian War, they went to Louisiana after that, and they and they and they had that uh, these Dems and those, and he never knew that. And I said that's where you, uh, that, that that's why all those yeah. accents kind of sound the same: Liverpool, Dublin, yeah. New York, yeah. uh, Canada, and um, and uh, K and the Cajun accent. Speaking of Canada, yeah, Celine Dion's from Canada. That's right. And she's part French. That's right. So she has kind of like a. French sounding Canadian, you know. Yeah, but but in France, I know something about that. They, the the French sadly looks down on the Canadian accent, uh, French Canadian accent, uh, and in the same way the English look down on the American English speaking accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to ask people what uh, how, uh, what what's your what's what's your idea of American accent and and and. Uh, I think I said this once before. They, they, uh, they said, I, I said this in, in England. They said, we, when we hear you coming down the street, all we hear is, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. I said, you mean like the, like the teachers on, <laughs> and parents on the Charlie Brown Christmas special? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, so that's not really music to the ears. If, if you remember last week we talked about yeah. this and there was, we, uh, uh, I showed a, a little, uh, song mm -hmm. that sounded like the way English, English people here yeah. here uh, 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 how how non English speaking people hear English yeah. and this is how it sounds just a bunch of gibberish. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, so I um, so you know this is what uh, makes everything so much fun the different accents. I tell you, who I was watching some show recently he has a very good voice is the guy Brian Cox mm -hmm. from the show Succession. I don't know and yeah, and then um, Brian or Brian Cox, you'd see him. He's a, he was the original Hannibal. Like I just heard his voice, and it oh, sounded okay. so commanding. Yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, so uh, and I, you know, when I wanted to be on the radio so bad, and and I thought, well, yeah. I better I better tune up my voice and kept kept it kept uh, kept try not to scream, not uh, try not to smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which which worked out fine. I met um, Tony Bennett once, oh. and Tony Bennett. It was weird. He was very nice and everything, but when he talked to you, he kind of mumbled everything. He almost like whispered everything because he didn't want to. And, and when I met him, he was in his seventies. He's in his nineties now, and his voice, even though he doesn't perform anymore, his yeah. voice is singing voice is still still mm. good. And he. He just mumbled everything, so it was, it was, so, <laughs> so he had to hear. And what's weird about voices? See, I have a loud voice. The weird thing about voices is, is that if if you really want people to hear you, you don't scream and yell like I do. You talk very s slow and quietly, and then everyone stops everything and they hear. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. I I still not learning that. Um, almost to the point where, where, like, if you're watching television, all these people are talking. And that you lean in, and the and the television is on. See, they hate it at my house because when I when I'm watching TV, I can almost focus on, on the on the voice and the TV screen and block out. I'm very good at concentration that way. And they and they get mad at me because because we want to ask you a question. I said, I'm watching TV here, I'm trying to follow this and everything. So if you want to uh, watch our movie, it's called Ellie. Please come and vote for it. It is at the Bird Theater. What is it? July what? July the 16th. July 16th. July 16th. Yeah. And that is this Saturday at 1 o'clock. Yeah. There's another show at, at 3.30. And those movies, but we're not, we're, our movie's not in it. Yeah. And, yeah. But to come to the 1 o'clock one and, um, and vote for us and, and, and applaud loudly when you, when you see, the, see the movie, Ellie. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, and thanks for having me at the. Uh, let's see if we get this right. The a special edition of the Mary Elizabeth Half of Variety. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we will. Thank you all for tuning in. Um. Just, um. Want y'all to have a blessed day? May God bless you.